2020 was probably the worst year for movies that we've seen in a while. Why? Well, because of everything that happened. I mean, movies got pushed over for one, some even two years ahead. Uh, a lot of movies we had to watch from home instead of in the actual theaters, and that created problems for a lot of people because they didn't want to pay $30 to watch a movie. I'm looking at you, Disney+. Plus. But... Throughout the year, I was able to compile a list, as you can see here. In this list, I was able to pinpoint at least 10 plus movies that I deemed at least the worst of the year. Now, a few things to keep in mind before I start my list. Number one, it's not really based on the movie's quality, it's based more on how the movie affected me. So, that being said, there's going to be some movies or maybe even all of these movies that you just don't agree with. And that's fine. I would love to read your guys' lists down below in the comments, okay? So let me know. Another rule is that these movies, I'm basing it off the ones that came out this year throughout any platform. Because of this whole reason that uh, we couldn't watch movies in the theaters, I had to resort to watching movies through different streaming medias, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, and thank goodness for those, because I was able to see a lot of the movies that I'm going to talk about today, not only for the, the bad ones and also for the good ones, I was able to watch it on streaming platforms, so big up to streaming platforms. And lastly, these are going to be short reviews. Um, sadly, I wasn't able to post a review for every single one of these movies. Uh, I'll explain a little more on that at the end of the video. Um, but... I'm gonna try to summarize my feelings towards each movie without really taking a look at the specifics of the movies. That being said, here are my honorable mentions. The Tax Collector. Coffee and Kareem. Tenant. The Babysitter Killer Queen. Project Power. So these were the movies that almost made my top 10 list. However, these next ones that we're gonna talk about, I really did not enjoy. Wonder Woman 1984. So coming in at number 10, I have Wonder Woman 1984. The biggest reason I have this movie on my top 10 list is not because of quality. It is not good quality in this movie, 100%. But it was more because of the disappointment that it was. I genuinely was really excited for this movie because I'm a big fan of the first one. I think the first movie is fantastic. I was lost in its beauty, lost in its magic. I was genuinely enjoying every single aspect of the movie. I'm a big fan of Wonder Woman, the first one. So when I came to see this one on Christmas Day, I was like, let's do this. I'm excited. I sat with the whole family. We were ready to watch it. But right about when the second act starts, I looked at my family and I said, man, this movie's a little boring. <laughs> and I never thought in a million years that I would say that about Wonder Woman 1984 because of the impact that the first one gave me. So the reason this is on my number 10 is mainly because of the incredible disappointment that I felt after watching the movie. There's some things that are cool to see in the movie, but in general, the movie suffers in a lot of its production. I'm talking about writing, I'm talking about effects. There's a specific scene where Wonder Woman, you see her running on the street at full force, her feet aren't even touching the floor. That's how horrendous the effects are in this movie. And for a movie that had a bigger budget than its predecessor, you would expect at least better quality, right? No. Wonder Woman, the first one, had way better effects than this one, and it had a slightly smaller budget. That says something. This movie was doomed to fail from the start. I don't know if it was Patty's fault. I don't know if it was the producer's fault. I don't know whose fault this was. But they announced Wonder Woman 3, and I honestly, I don't know if I'm excited for it. We could be heroes. So number nine, We Could Be Heroes, it's essentially somewhat of a sequel to Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Not really, because it's its own story. It, they, Shark Boy and Lava Girl just really make an appearance. That's really much what it is. It's not really a sequel to that movie. However, I do see how they maybe wanted to market it as a Shark Boy and Lava Girl sequel because of the cultural impact that it would 
produce, I guess, and the more people will want to watch it. Now, the reason I hated, and I know I use this word sometimes in jokes and it doesn't really mean a lot, I genuinely disliked this movie. The main reason is because I don't know why movie studios do not understand or grasp the picture that when you make a, a, a sequel to a movie that happened 10 plus years ago, the people that grew up watching that movie are a completely different age, yet producers want to adapt those films to the younger audiences. We're grown! I remember watching Shark Boy and Lava Girl when I was like, what, 10, 11, maybe? Maybe even something younger than that. Now I'm 21, and I want to watch this movie thinking, oh, it's going to be a cool sequel to Shark Boy and Lover Girl. I recently saw Shark Boy and Lover Girl with my little brother, and I genuinely enjoyed it. So I don't know what happened in this movie. They didn't adapt it to a modern, to a modern generation that grew up watching this movie, which is their first strike. And they, they didn't even make it enjoyable for the younger generations. Now, I've been looking around and I've been hearing some weird reviews on this movie that is actually pretty good. Don't hear what the critics say. It's actually really good. It's not. It is not. It's probably one of the cheesiest superhero movies ever. Wonder Woman was my number nine because of its cheese also. But then this movie just knocked it out of the park. I genuinely disliked everything about We Can Be Heroes. Horrible experience watching this movie, and I don't recommend it. I really don't, and I'm sorry if you have to watch it. Fantasy Island. Now, Fantasy Island is probably one of those few movies that I genuinely come at it from a blind perspective. Reason being because I didn't watch the original project, nor did I know anything about the original project. So I genuinely didn't know anything about this movie. So. In a way, I was a little bit hopeful. You know, it had a good cast. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. Let's watch this. I really didn't not di like this movie, and the main reason was because of how they handled the story of how the island affected the characters. Now, the, the only two bright sides I could say were the that uh, I, for, I forgot his name. It's the the the, the white blonde guy, him, his character and Mag Maggie Q's character in this movie were strong in my opinion. I, I felt emotion for them. I felt no emotion for the rest of the cast, genuinely. Lucy Hale is supposed to be our protagonist here or our protagonist-ish character, I guess, because like everybody could be considered a protagonist if you think about it, but she, she more than the rest. From the get-go, you're kind of supposed to feel for her and like for her, but from the beginning, I hated her character. I did not feel any emotional connection ever. Literally, as soon as she jumped out of the plane and got and stepped foot on the island, I was like, I don't like you. By the end of the movie, something happens to her character and you're like, okay, but you didn't really earn that because I didn't like you from the beginning. <laughs> there was no arc here, like what happened? So don't watch the movie, it's not worth it. Uh, even to watch that arc that I'm talking about. Everything was bad. The performances were bad. The story was very weak. It made no sense in a lot of parts or it took a lot of liberties in its story. You know, it jumped a lot of hurdles really quickly and really freely. Um, in the end, I didn't like it. The Turning. The Turning. Boy, was I liking this movie. It, the, I'm, I genuinely try to be a person who watches a movie and doesn't let endings define the entire experience. But at the same time, I'm human. So when I see a movie and it doesn't have a good ending, it genuinely affects the entire movie because I'm left with a sour taste in my mouth as I walk out of the theater, or in this case, as I get up out of my couch, because I saw this one at home. I genuinely had that same feeling for this movie. I started off liking it. The performances were quite strong in my opinion, especially the nanny or the babysitter or the teacher, whatever you call her. She was quite good in this movie. I genuinely enjoyed her performance. I enjoyed how weird this movie was, some of the weird turns it was taking. It's definitely a story that I had seen before, especially this year in The Haunting of Bly Manor. Let's pause here for a second. Hi, it's Fresh from the editing booth. I just want to mention that I saw Haunting of Bly Manor way before I saw The Turning, so that's why I made that comment. I know and understand that The Turning came way before Haunting of Bly Manor, yet I saw Bly Manor first. So yeah, that being said, let's get back to the video. 
especially this year in The Haunting of Bly Manor. It is the exact same source material, um, which I didn't know until after I saw the movie because I was like, I saw that in Bly Manor. That's the exact same story. And then I looked at it and I was like, oh, it's based on the same source material. What ruined the movie for me was its ending. And I know it sounds drastic, but imagine you're watching a movie, which already is not that great. I liked it, but it wasn't that great. And then it has a horrible ending. It ruins the experience for you. And that's what happened for me in The Turning. I liked the characters. I liked where the story was going. But by the end of the movie, with this weird ending, the way I understood what they were trying to do, but they did it, or I guess, in other words, they executed it very poorly, in my opinion. So in the end, The Turning, because of its ending, is why I genuinely disliked this movie. An American Pickle. I'll admit that this one's a little bit of a sad entry because I genuinely like Seth Rogen movies. Uh, the last one that, w the very first review that I did on this channel, I don't know if you guys remember that, you guys can go back on the list. It's a Seth Rogen movie with Charlie Theron. It's probably one of my favorite comedies ever. I genuinely loved it. I saw it three times in theaters. So when I came into this movie and I saw its weird concept, I was like, okay, I'm in, I like this. And about, this movie had me for like the first 20 minutes, explaining the story of how his grandfather got uh, stuck in a vat of pickle juice, I guess, <laughs> and froze over, or Brian, Pickle Brian, I guess, and then froze over until today's age. And now he and his great, great grandson are just walking the streets together. I think of streets in New York together. This is one of the few movies that I clicked off and I kind of dreaded going back into it, but I wanted to finish it to officially say if it belonged on my top 10 list. Because after the 20 minute mark, I genuinely was not enjoying this movie. It was really slow. The comedy wasn't really landing for me. Uh, I kind of understood what they were trying to do with the story, but it just didn't click with me. And that's the reason I didn't like this movie. In fact, I genuinely disliked this movie. I literally, after the 20 minute mark, I couldn't find anything redeemable. And it's highly rated on Rotten Tomatoes and a few critics have said that they'd like the movie. Awesome. Me personally, I really didn't like it. If you like Seth Rogen, if you like the story about an old dude that got stuck in pickle juice and then is now in today's society, Give it a gander, you might like it. I didn't. Do little. I I have a few things to say about Do Little. Uh, I'll be honest, I enjoyed about the first 10 minutes of this movie. You know, getting to meet Robert Downey Jr.'s Do Little, seeing all the animals, talking to him. I thought it was cool. Uh, the very first intro scene where we get to see like Do Little doing his magic. Then about after that. <laughs> all the way until the end, I was just bored out of my mind. I couldn't click with anything that the movie was trying to do. The adventure was boring for me, the danger was boring for me, and I kinda get it because the movie tries to be a kid's movie. So obviously, it, since it's not targeted for my audience, I might not enjoy it, I understand that. But at the same time, look at Disney, for example. And I know it's hard to compare to Disney because Disney is Disney, but they've been able to work a magic formula here where they make movies for children that adults somehow end up enjoying. And I think that every movie studio needs to pick up on this because children are not dumb. They can watch movies that have a little more meaning to them. They can watch movies that are not Let's go on an adventure, like the entire way through. This movie has a lot of those performances where, okay, what are we doing right now? We have to go on this adventure because it's gonna be fun. It's like very dramatic acting, which I get it as a fantasy movie, they kind of have to do that, fine. But it really th th threw me off of the movie. Honestly, this movie, like its title, did little for me. American Pie Girls Rule. I gotta be honest here, I never was a fan of American Pie, genuinely. <laughs> like, I've seen like two of them. I didn't like either of them. This movie was garbage in every sense of the word. The comedy never landed for me. I think I chuckled once, maybe. I The comedy wasn't landing with me and that's a big ticket item when with American Pie. It's this raunchy comedy. And don't get me wrong, I laugh at raunchy comedy all the time in different movies. It's not something that I don't laugh at. It's just when it, when they did it in this movie, it just did not connect with me. I genuinely did not laugh 
for American Pie. This movie, as similar to all the American Pie movies, try to push these sexual raunchy jokes and, and kind of defend it by saying, oh, it's comedy and you're gonna laugh at it because it's weird and it's awkward. But they do the same formula for every single movie. Teens get into some awkward situations that they don't know how to get out of and the only way they can resolve it is to have sex at the end of the movie. That's really what it is. American Pie Gross Rule is no different from its predecessors. And just like its predecessors, I did not like American Pie Gross Rule. The New Mutants. So this was my very first drive-in experience. And if you wanna learn more about that, click on the link in the description. It'll take you to my TikTok, where I share my story of how my drive through experience was. Now to the movie. There's one thing that I genuinely enjoyed and I'm actually kind of worried, kind of bummed that we're not gonna see them again. And it was the performances, especially from Anya Taylor-Joy. I think she was the strongest performer here in this movie, which makes sense. She's been tried a lot in different movies and she's proven, she's delivered. Then the rest of the cast was actually pretty cool. I enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed the powers that they had, and I enjoyed the relationship that the characters had with each other. Because everything else was very, very poor. The writing was weird, the story was really slow, I was very bored throughout the entirety of it. Superhero movies are supposed to be fun, or at least action-packed. This movie didn't have a lot of that. And I get it, why? Because it's trying to be somewhat of a horror movie, and horror movies don't really have that effect most of the time. But even in its horror, it wasn't that scary. So it didn't do well in a superhero genre, and it didn't do well in a horror genre. So when it doesn't do well in either genre, the film just doesn't work. And that was my end result as I was driving away <laughs> from this movie. It didn't work for me at all. Only the performances, but performances aren't enough. I mean, look at Hellboy, look at David Harbour. His performance was fantastic. I want to see him again as Hellboy, but the movie was weak. Same thing here. Gretel and Hansel. So coming in at number two, we have Gretel and Hansel. I will admit that this movie at first, I was like, where's, okay, where's this going? It had me a little bit into the story. But the problem with this movie is the same problem that I have with The Witch. It is incredibly slow. My goodness, this movie is so uneventful. It's just two siblings getting lost in the woods after being kicked out of their home and just stumbling upon a witch's house, just like the story. But they make that simple concept so boring <laughs> that I was pulling my hairs because I genuinely was so bored out of my mind. And again, I try to finish movies because I, I want to be fair. But this is one of those movies where I was genuinely tempted to, to stop watching it because I was just so bored. I will add this, it took some really weird choices in filmmaking. It tried to be different, it tried to be weird, I guess you can say, which makes sense for the story because it's a weird and it's a very different situation that the kids are going through. So I get why they did that. But that didn't work for me at all because it took me out of the movie to the point where I, it was difficult for me to come back into the story and get lost again. And that's what movies are supposed to do. Get you lost in these worlds, in these stories, in these characters, performances. It didn't work for me. This movie did not work for me. Everything was weak. And coming in at number one. The Grudge. The Grudge. <laughs> the Grudge is the first movie in my entire life where I was this close from leaving the theater. What happened? I went to see it with a friend of mine and I went out to get some popcorn about middle of it. And I genuinely thought to myself, I don't want to come back. I do not want to come back. That's how much I hated this movie. Everything about this movie was horrible. The performances, weak. The effects, weak. The horror, weak. The story, weak. The pacing, slow. My goodness is this movie slow to the point where I, I don't even know what words to say. 
Like, I, I can't find the words to express how much I hated this movie. Everything about it. I wanted to leave that movie theater so bad. And I was with a friend of mine. And normally when you watch movies with friends, it's more exciting right it's supposed to be in a better experience we both looked at each other at the by literally by the end of the movie and we both looked at each other and we said do we really want to finish this movie like the ending we're seeing the ending do we care and then he looked at me and he said yeah dude i want I, I i'm not liking it but i want to finish it you know i already paid the money <laughs> and then he looks at me like 10 minutes later <laughs> and he says, Hey dude, you want to go? <laughs> and I said, no, dude, I already paid for this ticket. It's already almost over. Let's just pull through. And we did. And we hated the movie, both of us. He'll probably say the same thing. This movie is just horrible. And I couldn't find anything redeemable. Don't watch this movie, please. You will not enjoy it. You will leave the experience worse than entering it and i promise you that so that's it that's my top 10 worst movies of 2020 again this was probably the worst year for movies yet i was able to pull off a top 10 list uh i'm sorry for not posting a lot this year there was a lot of different things that happened in my life i'm currently living in florida right now i used to live in cali that's uh my grandfather died not so long ago so there was a lot just a lot of things you know, this whole pandemic uh school work just oh too many things piled up together that i wasn't really able to find the time to make videos and that's on me i'm sorry but i appreciate you guys for clicking this video and watching it through if you'd like to follow me on my socials i highly appreciate it i have a tiktok account that's slightly growing and i am enjoying every second of it that that is going to be in the link uh in the description below uh you can also follow me on my instagram because i have like two instagrams and different all that stuff is going to be down below okay so yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one peace